Hey everyone, welcome back to this recent linen channel. I'm Janelle and today we're gonna do another vertical weaving project because I just keep thinking about this technique and how there's so many different ways to use it. So we're gonna explore some more. Let's get started. So I wove this upside down. I figured out what I needed at the top to use the loops on this chunkier dowel here. This spacing is like a little over three inches right here. On my loom, I have 48 warp strings warped and I used 4-8 cotton. I just did the single warp on a 4 EPI loom. Then for the weft, I used Lion Brand Woolies Thick and Quick and I just did plain weave. I tried to keep my edges as straight as possible and I actually wove this upside down. So this is actually the top of my piece, but I wove it from here up because I just wanted to make sure the spacing was correct to wrap around this dowel at the end. But what I wanted to try today is a little bit different than the last vertical weaving one. I want to try to use some cotton string. This is from Unfettered Co. and we do have discount codes for you in the description box below. I absolutely love their recycled cotton string. I use it a lot and I am using sort of like this is gonna have a bit of a retro vibe to it. I think both in design and, and the like colors that I chose. So we have this like rust color, a dark gray, and this sage color. Now, I was thinking about the vertical weaving and how you could create so many different shapes. And I had this thought of not having any horizontal weaving with the colors I'm using, but just do vertical weaving. Now, I wanna kind of there's so many different shapes you could create, first of all. So one thought I had, so I'm just gonna kind of lay this out so you can hopefully visualize better what I'm talking about. So one idea I had was to sort of create almost like, almost like a bit of a, a zigzag-ish design and then go in with other colors and just continue replicating that giving it this really like graphic look. And it feels again with these colors and even like the shapes, it feels a little bit retro. Then after I thought about this idea, I was like, how could I take this one step further? And I thought it would be really cool to create a mirrored design using this method. And then that's when I was like, this feels really retro. And that's why I chose these colors. So in that case, I think what I wanna do is weave vertically and then come over a little bit at an angle, weave vertically again, come over at an angle and then down. Now, because I wanna do three different colors of this, I'm gonna to have to make sure that I'm not making my angles too long and therefore I don't have enough room. So, so we're, we're gonna start from the middle and work our way out, um, but I need to figure out like, just how I want this to go. I also want the string to cascade down into the fringe again, because I really like that look. It just, it makes it feel like the fringe is more part of the piece than rather than an afterthought, which isn't necessarily a problem. I do that all the time. But when it works, I do love when we can sort of have like this continuous line. So I think what I'm gonna do, I need to decide the order of the colors. I was kind of thinking, let's look at these colors together. Maybe that would be a little bit better because then we have, like these two are, are both a little bit darker and this one's lighter. So I think we'll do that. So we're gonna start with the rust and I'm gonna cut a nice long piece of this and actually two pieces, but let's kind of, I'm gonna do a shorter fringe I think for this piece. So I'm just gonna have it hang down, you know, 10 to 12 inches. And then I'm just gonna kind of create that shape again and then leave a nice long tail. I just want to make sure I have lots here. And I think even before I cut another piece, I want to try this first because I do have a little bit of a concern that this is going to be too thick, in which case we'll have to switch gears and materials, which I really don't want to do, but We'll do what we gotta do. So I'm just using a little plastic yarn needle for this. It's just a little bit easier um, to get this one because it's so much skinnier than my wood tapestry needle to get it through for vertical weaving. And then what I'm gonna do first is find the center of the weaving. 
So this is center. So I think I'm gonna come down on this warp string. And then for the next piece, I'll skip two and have this one here. So let's just give this a try and see what happens. So I'm gonna go through the twining first. We'll just see what that's looking like. So far, so good. So I'll leave a bit of a tail there. Tucking in the tails on this one is also potentially gonna be a little bit tricky. And now I'm gonna just weave just over one, under one. I'm doing, I'm following the loops. Let's zoom in here for a bit. So what I'm doing is I'm gonna follow along this warp string. And I'm just gonna weave in the loops that are sitting on top of that. Okay, so far I think this might work. So now I need to figure out again when I'm gonna jut over here and over here. Something I have to think about is I don't want to come too close to this side because we're also gonna have two other pieces that need to go in yet. So I kinda have to you know, figure out where those are gonna go as well to make sure that I'm leaving enough space here at the bottom for both of those. I think the lines can be pretty close together. So if I go three in from the edge, skip two. So if I end up here, I think that would be okay. And it doesn't need to be too perfect. You don't have to get too crazy about making sure everything is like perfectly spaced if you don't want to. I think I'm gonna grab one more loop here and then we're gonna jut over here, move down, go over here. So we're gonna end up about there. That's like somewhat even. And again, like it doesn't have to be super perfect. So I think I'm happy with that. Um, I'm gonna come over here and just basically pick where I'm going. And I think I'll try to grab a similar amount as to here. Now the next question is, should I have tried to go through loops here as well? I don't know. I don't think it's totally necessary, so I'm gonna go with that and then skip over to here. So one, two, three, four. And let's just see what that looks like. The, the, the thing about playing around with ideas is like, don't worry about if you end up wanting to take it out. Okay, so already I can feel like, I kind of feel like I should have grabbed one more loop to make the angle at least more similar to that one. Cause right now it feels a little bit like, or maybe I should have just done the reverse, like hooked it here. Cause I do kind of want those angles to at least somewhat match. So. I'm just kind of holding my finger here and I think I want to go under this one next time. So I'm just going to stick my needle through that. I'm going to undo this, which is like literally no big deal. I think unweaving is such a part of weaving and especially when you're testing out new ideas, it's just part of the process. Okay, so once again, I'm kind of feeling like the angle isn't the same, but this is kind of where we can decide does it really matter? Okay, let's calculate some things because maybe I do want it more precise. So there's one, two, seven between here and one, two, three, five. So I think this section should have came over one more warp string, which is totally fine. We can do that. And I'm just sort of leaving those loops up so I can see where I want to go back. and that looks a little bit more even, which I guess I did want. <laughs> so I think I'm happy with that. And I'm gonna have to kind of continuously like readjust this area, which is fine. Then we're gonna just basically repeat that two strings over. Do you see what I'm going for? Okay, so I'm gonna go for the green next. So now I can just sort of copy the length of my previous string. And this one should be a little bit easier because now we're just like copying everything, but we're gonna do it two strings over. I feel like this section of the string lost its twist a little bit. 
So I think I might just try to twist it up a little bit better and then pull it through a bit. We'll try to like twist while we pull to, oh, that looks better. Okay, so now we have two in and now I can go ahead and put the gray in. And we do kind of have to be careful about like those gaps being made and I can just close them by just like readjusting those weft strings. So now the question is, so if you can see here how I went through this loop and then this one is the next row down. Now I'm wondering if I should go the next row down again um, so that it's sort of this even angle that's happening, but I'm not totally sure that's necessary or if I want to line it up with what the orange was. Uh, let's try it stepping down and we can see what that looks like. Cause originally I was imagining these would be all the same, but because I only skipped two strings, the loop I had to go through is further down than this one. So, so we have those two options. I can either match it up with the orange or I can have it step down, which I think ultimately is the better option at this point. Yeah, let's try that. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So I need to go through four total loops to match these other two. Okay, so something I just noticed, let's look at this here. This orange one went through five loops and these other two are only going through four. I technically could have done five on the last one, but I think to just sort of match these up nicely, I'm just gonna undo this one. So then they're all kind of just it looks a little bit more like the rest of the angles that we have going on. Okay, I really like this. It's gonna be very like geometric. So now basically all we have to do is repeat the same thing on the other side. So basically this whole pattern is always leaving two strings, two warp strings between each of the like cotton chunky string. I'm basically just gonna be replicating the same thing on the other side. Okay, so here's what I've got so far. Now I'm kind of wondering if like, there should be any other details out in the center to sort of finish this off. I'm just feeling like, is it too blank in this section? But now I'm just wondering if I should add anything else. Like even if, like I'm almost wondering if I should even just add just one more piece out in the center? Huh. I feel a little bit stumped by this right now. So what can we do to sort of fill this in a little bit better? It's like there needs to be something here. <laughs> okay, well, I'm just gonna try something because I, I just feel like there's too much white space out in the middle. And so in retrospect, maybe I should have tried to have these more like here, like further or yeah, further from the edge um, instead of so close to the edge. I'm not entirely sure what it is, but we're gonna just, we're just gonna try something. So you guys, we're just playing at this point, which, you know, it's all, it's all part of it. If it doesn't feel right, I don't want to just take it off the loom and then, you know, regret that I didn't try to push it a little bit more. I'm, I'm definitely like gone off the deep end at this point. <laughs> okay. I think this is headed in a better direction now. So now I just need to repeat what I did with the, the greenish color here. And then I think it's done. I think, like I said, I just, I made it too wide. And so the middle just was feeling really empty and it kind of looked like an accident, which it was. <laughs> so now I'm just gonna go back and put in this last green one and then we'll see where we're at. This looks so much better to me. Um, it looks like we've utilized the space of 
that we had a little bit better now. So I think I'm quite happy with where this is at and I think we can move on to adding the fringe. So actually what we should do first is tuck in the ends because that's gonna be a little bit of a challenge on this one. So thankfully with this one, we don't have a ton of ends to tuck in, but like I said before, it's gonna be a little bit tricky. I think what I wanna do since like it's already kind of bulky here on the front with these um, strings going through here, I'm going to try to tuck in these ends on the back in the same spots they are in the front because I feel as though we won't really notice them as much then on the front. So I'm just grabbing about four weft strings. I'm not weaving this time. I'm grabbing every loop. Just going to carefully fish that through. And yeah, it doesn't really, it doesn't really affect the way it looks. So I think that's the best way to do it. Okay, so for this little section here, I tried tucking in the ends and no matter what I did, you can see it from the front. And there's not a lot of <clears throat> space to be tucking these back up in here either. So I'm gonna do something I don't normally do. What I've done is for each string, I split them apart. And I'm actually just gonna tie knots for this section because like I said, no matter what I did, I could see it through the front. And what I might even do actually, so let's tie that. And then I'm going to cut off the excess, leave a little tail so it doesn't just immediately come undone. And then I think I'm gonna tuck, so there's an orange one going here and here. So I might tuck this section in here and this section in here. You kind of have to pay attention to how what you're doing on the back is affecting the front. So in my case, it was showing. So I'm just kind of like making it work so that it looks tidy enough on the back, but also that it's not showing through the front. So now I'm just taking these up where that orange is on the front. And before I cut it off, I am gonna just like take a peek to make sure it's not showing a bunch. You can see it a tiny bit, but I think that's totally fine. You can't really see it. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is add fringe. I think I'm gonna just use this five millimeter cotton string, one strand for every two strings. And just like the last vertical weaving video we did, I'll link that up here if you haven't seen it yet. I'm going to basically just wherever these fall, I'm gonna loop them in with my fringe. Now that I have all the fringe on, I'm just gonna do a twining stitch, a couple rows of plain weave on top of that, and then I'm just gonna push it all up underneath the fringe. I'm gonna finish this up and then we can see what it looks like when it's done. All right, friends, here is the finished piece. I am actually so, so happy with the way this turned out. I feel like it's totally different than anything I've done before and it utilizes that vertical weaving in a totally different way from the last video. But speaking of that video, if you haven't watched that one, click right here and watch that one next.